In this second video, I want to talk about the special conjunction rule and the special disjunction rule. And again, it would be a good idea if you have this chapter printed out and in front of you while I'm going through this. Okay, so in this case, we're going to start, we're actually going to look at a couple populations. This will be the first population we look at. And we're going to answer this question. What is the probability of selecting an individual from this population who is employed and has high blood pressure? Okay, now a couple things to notice. One, we're going to be combining the probability of selecting someone who's employed and the probability of selecting someone who has high blood pressure with an and. So that means we need to use one of our conjunction rules. And second, you can see, if you look at the population, that the variables, um, blood pressure level and employment status, are independent of each other. And you can tell that because this, probability, or this proportion, 80% of the people that are employed have low blood pressure, is the same as this proportion here. 80% of the unemployed people have low blood pressure. And same down here, these two are the same. So, since our variables are independent, we can use the special conjunction rule. So, to answer this, we're going to employed and high blood pressure. Okay, so here we take the probability of being employed and multiply it by the probability of having high blood pressure. And you'll notice uh, that this rule here doesn't use a conditional probability. We just have the straight up probability of selecting someone who's employed, and we're multiplying that by the straight up probability of selecting someone who has high blood pressure. So, for employed in this population, 85% of the people are employed, so our probability is 0.85. And 20% of the people in this population have high blood pressure, so the probability of selecting someone with high blood pressure is 0.2. So if we multiply these, we're going to get 17%, 0.17. Okay, now notice we, if we were to use the general conjunction rule here, so if we were to do this, same thing, figure out the probability of employed and having high blood pressure, We would have to use, of course, the conditional probability, high blood pressure, given that the person is employed. So uh, this probability, of course, is the exact same as that one, so 0.85, oops, 0 0.85 times. Now, in this case, to find this conditional probability, so if someone is employed in this population, that means they come from this column here, they reside in this column here, and so if you are in this column you have a 20 percent chance of having high blood pressure. So that's our conditional probability, 0.2. So again we're going to get 0.17. Alright, so we see that no matter which rule we use, so here it's the Here it's the general conjunction rule, and up here it's the special conjunction rule. But whichever one we use, we get the same answer, 17% chance. So why is that? Well, you may be able to see this already for yourself, that the in this population, the probability of selecting someone who has high blood pressure, that is 
this probability is exactly the same as the probability of selecting someone who has high blood pressure given that they're employed. And in fact, if we just go another step, we can see that this probability is also the same as the probability of selecting someone who has high blood pressure given that they're unemployed. So since all of these probabilities are the same, in this particular case they're all 0.2, we can safely do away with using the conditional probability and just use the probability of having high blood pressure. And we can do that anytime, not just in this example, but anytime the variables are independent. If they're independent, we know that these two probabilities are going to be the same as this one here, probability just of having high blood pressure. Okay, here's another problem. What is the probability of selecting someone from this population who is unemployed and has high blood pressure? Okay, so this is going to be... I'm just going to Okay, so the probability of being unemployed in this population, 0.15. Probability of having high blood pressure. Uh, high blood pressure, we just said, was 0.2. So that stays the same. So our probability is going to be... 3%. So if we select someone at random from this population, we have a 3% chance of getting someone who's unemployed and has high blood pressure. Okay, let's move on to this. What is the probability of selecting someone from this population who is employed or unemployed? Okay, so here we're combining these two probabilities, the probability of selecting someone who's employed and the probability of selecting someone who's unemployed. We're combining those two probabilities with an or, so that means we want to use one of our disjunction rules. And also we can see, just from what we know about variables and their values, that employed and unemployed are mutually exclusive. If an individual has one of these properties, we know that he or she is not going to have the other one simply not allowed in our these populations that we're looking at. So consequently here we can use the special disjunction rule. So to do that we take the probability of being employed, add it to the probability of being unemployed, and that's it. We don't have to subtract anything out. So probability for employed, 0.85. So we're up here, probability for unemployed, 0.15. Okay, so that's going to give us 100%. So for selecting someone at random, from this population, we have a 100% chance of getting an individual who's employed or unemployed. Of course, that's what we would expect since we know that everyone in this population has one of these two values. Okay, so again, this is the special disjunction rule. Let's look at this population here. And this is a little bit more interesting application of the special disjunction rule. So we want to know the probability of selecting someone from this team. Um, this is the actual numbers for the flyers for, oops, that should be 2010, 2011 year. Um, but this is the, well, it's not the nationality, I guess, but the uh, location of birth is actually what it is. So... What is the probability of selecting someone from this team who is European or American? So in this case, a 
Okay, again, these two values are mutually exclusive. Um, if someone's born in Europe, they can't have been born in America, and vice versa. So to figure this out, we again use the special disjunction rule. Okay, so the probability of selecting someone who's European from this population, as long as we're selecting randomly, is going to be 0.27. And the probability of selecting someone from this population who's American is 0.15. So the probability of selecting someone who's European or American is going to be 0.42. Okay, so let's just look at one more quickly. Someone who's European or Canadian Okay, okay so we're going to have this and if we do the calculation we find that probability is 85%. We have an 85% chance of selecting someone who's European or Canadian when we randomly choose someone from this Flyers team.